Today what we're going to do is we're going to do a cylinder leak test to show you a method of doing that. The reason we do cylinder leak tests is to make a determination of either A, overall engine condition, or B, where a component problem might be. If we've got a vehicle that has a cylinder misfire and we've decided that the misfire isn't created by either fuel or ignition, then we have to start evaluating the mechanical condition of the engine. The cylinder leak test allows us to pinpoint any possible leaks and compression that the cylinder may have. If we have a cylinder that can leak past the valve or past the rings, then we can bleed off combustion pressures and that in and of itself will create a misfire. So the purpose of the test is to actually monitor the percentage of leak that we may have. If we listen to the cylinder leak test when we're doing it and we have air escaping past the exhaust valve, then we should have air coming out the exhaust manifold and the exhaust pipe. That would indicate to us that the problem is on the exhaust side. If we have air coming out of the intake, either through the throttle body or past the carburetor, then we have an indication that the problem is on the intake valve side of the system. If we have a lot of air escaping past the rings and into the crankcase, then we're going to see a lot of air coming out of the valve covers, the PCV valve area, things like that. If our cylinders are good, then we're just going to read a certain percentage of leak. Normally, anything under 40% is going to be considered normal leakage. Uh, obviously, the lower the better. The thing is, is that you're not going to get perfectly sealed cylinders. You're never going to see a cylinder that has 0% leak. All of them will have some percentage of leak. Therefore, just like with a compression test, what we really want to do is look at all of the cylinders and make a determination if the leak is roughly the same from cylinder to cylinder. In other words, if I'm showing 30% leak on one cylinder, and that's a normal leak figure, I want to see roughly 30% on all of them. If I see 10% on some and 40% on others, even though those readings are all good, that indicates that there's some kind of an issue. <clears throat> so, it's very simple. You need to have a good source of shop air, and this shop air has to be able to maintain at least 100 pounds of pressure for a reasonably long period of time. You need a cylinder leak gauge tester. That's what we've got here, all right? And you'll notice that there's two gauges. This gauge here is the regulator gauge. This tells us how much air we're going to put into this cylinder. We want to put it at 100 pounds. Most gauges are set to work at 100 pounds. This gauge here will actually indicate the amount of leakage that we have in each cylinder. High, moderate, low, okay? Now, obviously, if you're in the 80% range, there's a real problem. If we're reading in that range, then we've obviously either got a valve open, or a valve problem, or a ring or cylinder wall problem. There's a mechanical problem here if I've got in the 80% range. It's very important when we're doing the cylinder leak test that we have the cylinder that we're going to test at the top dead center on the compression stroke. We do not want to have any valves open on this engine when we're doing that cylinder's leak. This particular engine is a 351 based stroker engine and it's very simple for us to find top dead center on each cylinder. All I have to do is with the distributor cap in place, go through, mark on the distributor base the position of each terminal. So for example, this terminal's marked, this one's marked, they're marked all the way around. I've already done that. Now all I have to do is if I want to test this cylinder, I rotate the engine until the rotor on the distributor is pointing at my mark. Then I know that I'm at top dead center, compression stroke for that particular cylinder. I know the valves are closed and I'm not going to get a false reading. So the first cylinder that I want to do is number one cylinder, which on this engine 
is right here. So I need to rotate this engine around until my rotor is pointing at number one. That mark back there indicates number one, so I'm gonna just rotate this engine over by hand. It's gonna take a minute. Now just for illustration, I'm not gonna get it all the way around to number one. I'm gonna go ahead, thread this adapter hose in where the spark plug hole is. Spark plugs are already removed. So the adapter hose is threaded in. Now, I've taken this regulator and backed it off completely so that when I plug the air in, there is no air pressure in either of these gauges or this manifold. I need to set this at 100 pounds. So in order to do that, I'm going to start turning the regulator up. Until I get to 100 pounds. And you'll notice also that in this gauge here, the leak gauge, the pointer is in the set range. So I'm at 100 pounds and I'm in the set range. I could close off the regulator. It's important that any time I remove air or put air to these gauges that I do back the regulator off. All right, so I've got that set. I've got the hose in place, but I'm not actually on number one cylinder. So if I turn, put this hose in here, and put air to it, the engine is going to turn. See it turning over? That's because the piston is pretty far down the bore, okay? And you can see that in that situation, the engine is gonna move. I'm gonna remove that hose, actually set this thing to number one. If I'm at top dead center, then the engine really shouldn't rotate at all. There we go. Now we're going to take a reading. The engine didn't move, and this particular cylinder is indicating roughly 32 pounds or 32 percent leak. So it's within the acceptable range. It's starting to get a little higher in the acceptable range, but it is a normal reading. All right, now. If I rotate this engine, and then put the air to this cylinder, to this manifold, I'm probably going to have air escaping somewhere. If that was the case, then let's assume this engine was at top dead center. You could see my leak is almost 100%. Okay, the reason for that is because I just rotated the engine to the point that the exhaust valve is open. So with the exhaust valve open, the cylinder won't seal. All of the air going through this gauge is now going out the exhaust. I could do the same thing, rotate it around till the intake valve was open, then we'd have air escaping past the throttle body. So that's basically all there is to doing a cylinder leak test. You use it to diagnose problems and to just evaluate overall engine condition.